God be with you. Welcome to Sherwood Park United Church, United in the Park. I'm Stuart Jackson, and I'm, I guess, filling in for Marlene, who is uh, taking some vacation time. Whoever you are, wherever and whenever you are part of this, you are welcome here. Are there announcements or celebrations or news to be shared? You can use the microphone up here. I'm Cindy and I'm here with an announcement about the seniors group for January. We'll be going to the Matart Conservatory on Thursday, not Tuesday like it said on the PowerPoint. Thursday, January 17th, meeting at the church at 12.15 and we have our admission I think between 1 and 1.30. So we'll meet at the church at 12.15 to carpool. Uh, it's $10 per person. Please see me downstairs after church to uh, sign up and pay. Thanks. All right, thanks. Any other announcements, first of all? Nope. Celebrations, concerns. So it is, uh, I guess, Happy New Year to everybody. <laughs> and yesterday was uh, Orthodox... Uh, Christmas, so uh, I, I've forgotten my Ukrainian, but it's Christ, Christus es, es Natus, that's something to that effect. But uh, it's all it, yesterday or Saturday, Friday, Friday the sixth was Epiphany, which is the in in our lectionary is the time that we read the story of the visit of the Magi. So the, t the twelve days of Christmas end on the fifth, and then the sixth is the visit of the Magi, and then the first Sunday. Following that, following Epiphany, is uh, the time we mark the baptism of Jesus, hence my, my baptismal gown. And we do have some water to talk about at the theme time, so we'll see what unfolds. All right. Let's greet one another in the name and spirit of peace. Peace be with you. Spreading its arms throughout the night 
invite you to join me in reading the uh, acknowledgement of land. We are tree people. Oops. And the culture of the peoples with whom Treaty 6 was signed and the territory wherein our church resides. We acknowledge our responsibility as treaty members and we also honor the heritage and gifts of the Métis people. And as an affirming congregation, we welcome people of all racial and ethnic groups, socioeconomic backgrounds, genders, gender expressions, sexual orientations, and abilities. Let's prepare for worship as we listen to the music of the prelude. prophet Isaiah speaks for God and says, I have given you as a covenant to the nations, a light to the people. Just a quick correction to the announcement. Cindy was confused about the day, I guess. It is, it is Tuesday, January the 17th, that the trip to the uh, uh, Matart is taking place. So uh, please stand in body or spirit as we read our call to worship and our opening prayer. All who thirst, come to the water and drink deeply of the living streams. This is my part, the blue part. It's okay. You know, it always, always takes a bit of time to get into the routine again. Come, all who are weary. Come, all who yearn for forgiveness. As the water of the Jordan washed over Jesus, so the Holy Spirit washes over you and me. Our gracious God beckons and blesses us. We give praise for new life in Christ. Holy God, living water, river of mercy, source of life, in whom we live and move and have our being. Quench our thirst, refresh our weariness, bathe, wash, and cleanse us. Be for us always a fountain of life, a river of hope, springing up in the deserts. Amen. Now the tune for our next hymn is a familiar Christmas carol, but the new words are for the season after Epiphany are by Bernadette uh, Gaslane, who was on staff at St. Charles Roman Catholic Parish in North Edmonton when I met her several years ago. So it's interesting to see a local connection. In the darkness shines the splendor. shines the splendor of the word who took our flesh welcoming in love surrender death's dark shadow at his crash bearing every human story word made flesh reveals his glory Light of nations built in history, born of woman's flesh 
God called to the depths of mystery, restless hearts that seek the good. Sustaining us in sorrow, wine poured out to toast our joy. Exodus and new tomorrow, life's full promise to enjoy. Gladdening every human story, what made flesh reveals his glory. All God's people sing in jubilation of the birth that sets us free, telling of the revelation, Jesus, God's epiphany. Celebrate the human story, what made flesh reveals our glory. The word epiphany means revelation or manifestation. In this season after epiphany, the scripture readings invite us to reflect on the ways in which God is revealed to us through the lives of the people of Israel and through the life and ministry of Jesus. Let us pray for the understanding and insight. Holy God, as you revealed yourself through the innocence and weakness of a baby, reveal yourself again to us, we pray. Fill us with your spirit, in the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Our first reading is from the prophet Isaiah. This section of Isaiah was probably written almost six centuries before Jesus as the people of Israel were longing to return home from exile in Babylon. Although Christians often understand this passage as a description of Jesus, many scholars believe the prophet was speaking of the nation of Israel as God's faithful servant. A reading from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 42, verses 1 to 9. Here is my servant, whom I, up, I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break. A dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God, the Lord who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, the new things I now declare. Now I will announce what will happen next. Our response today is Psalm 29, which praises God's power. We will use the responsive version found on page 756 of Voices United, and the sung response sounds like this. A 
Ascribe to God, you powers of the heaven. Ascribe to God all glory and strength. Ascribe due honor to God's holy name and worship in the beauty of holiness. God's voice is over the waters, God's glory thundering across the great waters. God's voice is power, God's voice is full of majesty. God's voice shatters the cedars, splinters the cedars of Lebanon. God's voice makes Lebanon skip like a calf, Mount Hermon stampede like a wild young bull. God's voice forks into tongues of fire. God's voice shakes the wilderness, sets trembling the wilderness of Kadesh. God's voice causes the oaks to whirl, stripping the forest bare, and in the temple all cry, Glory! God sits enthroned above the waters. God is enthroned as sovereign forever. You give strength to your people, O God. Now give to your people the blessing of peace. John the Baptist caused quite a stir in the wilderness of Judea. His fierce preaching shook up the religious establishment. His message appealed most to those who were on the fringes of society. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 3, verses 13 to 17. John preached, I baptize you with water for repentance. But one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and will gather his wheat into the granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized. John tried to prevent him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, but you come to me. Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for in this way we shall do all that God requires. Then John agreed. When Jesus has, ba had been ba has been baptized, just as he came up from the water, Suddenly, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased.
we are all here today because we have been called by God to be here. I'm here because, well, I was called by God, but I was also called by the leadership team. <laughs> but I take my part in the worship life and in the life of this congregation as well. But you are also here because you have been called by God. Something happens in our time together here that draws you back time and time again. You didn't have to come today. <laughs> no one forced you to get dressed and come to church. At least I hope you came of your own free will. You had to make a special effort in order to get here on time. You may have come to see the other people here, to reconnect, a chance to visit with them. You may enjoy singing the hymns, so you came for the music. You may have come simply because you know that grandma would want it that way. Or maybe you even came to hear what the preacher might say. For whatever reasons, we are here at church because we are called. Not only do we come to church, but it's important enough to us that we offer our financial support to make sure the church is here. We want the church to be here, not just an empty shell of a building, but an active congregation. We want worship services. We want a church with a roof that doesn't leak, a church that is both a physical and a spiritual landmark, a focal point for our community. So there's something vitally important about this church, about church in general, and about this congregation. There is something important about our gathering here to worship God. And indeed, God has called us to be the church. Without our response to this call of God, there would be no church. So today's theme it offers us a chance to look at, at how we respond to God's call, to reflect on what it is that brings us here. What brings us here? It's a chance to take some time to examine who we are as the, the church in this time and in this place. One answer to the question of who we are is, is, comes from the Isaiah passage about the faithful servant. Now, I think we all have some idea of a faithful servant, even if we don't have servants ourselves these days. A faithful servant is one who puts our interests first, one who is always there when we need them or call on them to do something. A faithful servant is, already, all, is always ready to do what we ask, regardless of how hard or how tiring. A faithful servant never talks back, never questions our decisions, never balks at having to do a task. A faithful servant keeps working at the task until the task is done and done well. A faithful servant can even exceed our expectations. So, so this description is the essence of those first verses from Isaiah. Here is my servant whom I strengthen, the one I have chosen, with whom I am pleased. I have filled him with my spirit and he will bring justice to every nation. He will not raise his voice or make loud speeches in the streets. He will bring lasting justice to all. Now, taken out of context, this may sound like it's referring to Jesus, and in fact, our, our hymn suggests that as well. The, those first lines sound remarkably like the voice from heaven in the reading from Matthew's Gospel at the time of the baptism of Jesus. But Isaiah intends the faithful servant to be the nation of Israel, the whole nation. This passage was written around the time that Israel was hoping to return from exile in Babylon. The people needed to find a sense of purpose, an understanding of God's call and mission for them. So the prophet tells them that it's time to get on with the task of being God's faithful servants in the world the task of bringing justice and righteousness to the world, the task of making a difference in the world. The community of Israel 
was to use its God-given powers to serve the world. So this is part and parcel of God's covenant, God's promise with Israel. And this covenant is a two-way relationship. Instead of God doing everything for the people, like a heavenly vending machine, God expects a response from the people. God offers life and well-being, but has expectations as well. God expects the people to offer life and well-being to others, to establish life-giving relationships. God calls the people to be a community of servants. The prophet Isaiah uses the image of this suffering servant to paint a picture of humility and compassion and a willingness to put personal concerns aside for the sake of the wholeness and well-being of others. But there was a word that caught my attention from that reading from Isaiah. In, in, the, in the New Revised Standard Version, verse 6 reads, I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations. So it's this idea of God giving us as a light to the nations that caught my attention. Throughout the Christmas season, we spoke of Jesus as God's gift of light to us and to our world. But today, as we move beyond Christmas, we find that God has given us to be light to the world. Of course, this is not seeing ourselves as with the, that arrogant, self-centered pride which says we're so great because God has given us. We are God's gift to the world. We need a humble, a sincere, and faithful approach. We are God's gift, not so that we might be built up, but so that through us the world might be built up. God has given us not because we're so great, but so that we might serve the world in humility and faithfulness. And that's a world of difference between simply being called and being given. Yes, God calls us to be a light to the nation. Jesus bids us shine, as the song says. But simply being called suggests that we can choose to decline the invitation or ignore the call. Instead, I think Isaiah had something very different in mind. God has given us, which implies, first of all, that we didn't have much to say about it. It's already happened. Nothing we can do will change that. We have already been given as a light to the nations. This also creates a responsibility for us we are God's gift of light, so we need to make sure the light shines where it is needed. It's our responsibility to be sure the light doesn't flicker or go out. Like a lighthouse keeper, but also like the lantern itself, we are letting God's light shine. In presenting himself to be baptized by John, Jesus stands with the people and accepts the terms of God's promise, God's covenant. He is, I believe, fully aware of his call to serve God, fully aware of God's blessing on him, fully aware that he is being given as light. Through his baptism, Jesus receives the strength and the confidence he needs to begin his ministry as a member of God's covenant community as Isaiah's vision of God's faithful servant. But Isaiah's vision didn't end with Jesus. The Christian church today stands in the shoes of that faithful servant. Each of us plays a part in fulfilling God's vision, using our God-given gifts and powers to do God's work, God's work of healing and building up. And what we do here in this space has everything to do with that vision. We come, first of all, to experience for ourselves the healing power of Christ, that faithful servant. 
In our worship, we hopefully find healing for our wounds, forgiveness for our shortcomings and sins, and freedom from the chains that bind us. And then we go from these walls, filled with the spirit of the faithful servant, to carry out Christ's mission, bringing healing to a hurting world, opening the eyes of the blind, setting free those who sit in darkness, bringing light to the nations. This is our ministry. We are set apart and commissioned as God's faithful servants, each and every one of us, and all of us together. So today, as we recall the baptism of Jesus, we also remember that we have been baptized into Christ's baptism and into Christ's ministry. Through our own personal baptisms, we are made more aware of our call to serve God, more aware of God's blessing on us, and we receive the strength and confidence for our ministry as members of God's covenant community. In our worship here, God takes hold of us, gives us the power to fulfill this mission to the world. God chooses us and strengthens us, fills us with the Spirit and sends us out to follow in Christ's footsteps as faithful servants in our own right. We remember our baptism the sign of God's covenant with us. We, we remember the baptism of Jesus. And we remember that this covenant, God's covenant, is based on love, trust, and loyalty. God's love, God's trust, God's loyalty. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for your faithful servant, Jesus. Thank you for giving us to be your light to the world. Help us share our faith with one another. Strengthen us and fill us with your spirit so we may follow in Christ's way as your faithful servants, members of your covenant community. Amen.
please be seated. Let's lift our hearts in prayer. God eternal, our times are held within your hands. Our lives are shaped by your love. You take hold of what has happened and you nurture within it what you wish to be. God eternal, our times are open to your spirit. Our lives await your touch. God of mercy, fountain of loving care, wellspring of blessing and source of hope. Help us break through the dry surface of our parched lives to find the life that flows beneath, quietly, deeply, cool with refreshment, that living water for our souls, which is the Spirit of Christ, your Son. Draw us deeper into the meaning of our baptism so that righteousness may flourish among us. Through our baptism into your life, may we find courage in the face of illness, crisis, or death. We pray for those among us and in the world who struggle against pain and fear. May all your people find hope in the face of despair. We pray for the people of the church and the people of the world. We pray especially for those who need to hear your word of hope in the silence of our hearts. Loving God, may our lives reveal your holy will. Hear us as we pray our family prayer. God, who gives birth to the world, fill us with your light and help us to usher in your reign of love, justice, and peace here on earth. Tune us to the harmony of the heavens. Teach us to sing your name. Grant us wisdom, hope, and compassion for all living things. Give us what we need each day. Free us from what binds us as we release others from guilt and shame. Help us to focus on what is good and to do what is right. Teach us how to love. Renew our hearts, our minds, our strength, and make us whole and wholly yours. Amen. is 
prisoner from all chains to make the powerful care to rebuild the nations with strength of goodwill to see God's children everywhere I am the light of the world your people come and follow me if you follow and love you'll learn the mystery of what you were meant to do and be <clears throat> to bring hope to every task you do to dance at a baby's new birth to make music in an old person's heart and sing to the colors of the earth I am the light of the world your people come and follow me if you follow and love you'll learn the mystery of what you were meant to you have been given as a light for the nations God's gift of love for all the world as you go from here to fulfill that high calling may you go with renewed faith deeper commitment and abundant life in the name of Christ the light of the world may the waters of our baptism enliven us May the faith of our baptism strengthen us. May the community of the baptized support us. May Christ, who was baptized, keep us in God's love. Amen. <laughs>